we're going to talk about DS lists in this video. DS stands for data structure, which is something you're going to inevitably run into needing to have in pretty much all your games. And there's different kinds of data structures that we're going to talk about in other videos. So we're going to create something called my inventory. And we're going to say equals to DS list create. To add data to the list, you simply say DS list add. And then, of course, you want the, the list you want to add data to. And then you want to actually give it the value. So we're going to say sword. Since we're adding to the list, it's going to go in order. Okay, so the list is created. And we have data stored into it. But now how do we access that data? Well, we're going to go to our draw event. And we're going to use something that we learned a few videos back. The link for this one is in the description. We're going to use a for loop to write out everything that is in our DS list. So we're going to say for i equals 0. Actually, you should probably say var i equals 0. Semicolon if i is less than, look at this now, DS list size, in parentheses say my inventory, semicolon i plus plus, which that of course adds plus one to I, which starts at zero. In a DS list, um, it's always going to start from zero onward. So we are used to thinking one, two, three, four, five. In programming language, it would be zero, one, two, three, four. So this is going to, what we're going to do is access the first piece of data on the list, loop through all of it, depending on however big the list is. So we're going to say draw text. And within all of that, we're going to say wherever we want to put it, which is going to probably be 50. Yeah, 50. And then we're going to say DS list find. We're going to say value. We're going to say my inventory. And then comma. And we're going to say I. Okay. So we, we're already using a few functions for DS list. Of course, this gives you the size of the list. This is how you actually find a data within the list. And this is how you can find data according to the position. So, for example, to go back to the create event, if we wanted to access sword, well, we already know it's, it's the second thing inputted. So instead of I, of course, because that variable is not created here, we would say 1. If we wanted sword, we would say 0. 0, 1, 2, 3. If we wanted shield, we'd say 3. Okay. So, for example, if I said show message, and I wrapped it here, and I wanted to see helmet, I would say 0, 1, 2, I would say 2 right here. When I run the game, helmet, okay, and of course, it's not drawing everything out up here, because I have something else going on here that I'll show you how to do high scores in a moment, but let's fix that error on, on that jumbled up text. Let's say 50 plus, I'm going to put parentheses, we're going to say... 20 times I. Okay, there it is. Sword, apple, helmet, and shield. Just like we added in our create event. I'm going to delete this show message because we don't need it. Okay, now another thing. What, what if, like, you know he has a helmet, but you don't know what position it's in? How can we get that information? Well, let me show you that. So we're not going to use this guy, but we can use DS list find index. And we're going to say my inventory. And so we want to access helmet, so we'll just put in there helmet. This will return, because of course this is zero, this will return the number two. So then we know where, where it is on, on the list. So we're going to wrap this in show message, and this will return the value of two, which is, is its position on the list. So we do that, number two. Okay. And of course, if we wanted to find the sword, which should be zero, since it's the first thing, all right, it'll be zero. Another thing that we can do is shuffle our list. So we can say DS list shuffle. Uh, and we can say my inventory. Now this will shuffle everything. So it's added in this order, but it's going to randomize it to where they're going to be in a different order every single time. So now I'm not going to know where sword is at, but let's say I want to find it. It's no longer going to be at zero. So let's run the game and it's going to show me a different number. It's going to show me zero. Okay, that's great. We're going to say right here, randomize. Okay, so this will make it to where every time you run the game, it's going to give you a different, it's just going to randomize the seed, basically. 
So I'm just going to put that there. <laughs> okay, so now it's number one. And now every time we run the game, it's going to be a different number, just about. So that first time it actually did work, but it, it left it at zero. And it will keep leaving it at zero unless you put in randomize. Now, another way that you can access data within your DS list is something that we call an accessor. Let's say we wanted Apple, right? We would put, we would put that. <clears throat> well, you could use an accessor. So you would say my inventory, and I'll do these square bra brackets. And then you do one of these things, which is like above your enter key. I don't even know what you call it, but you have to click shift. I don't even know what you call that, but it does it does work. And then you just type in one. You, you know, I normally put a space, but you don't have to. This will return the same thing as this. If I wanted it to return shield, I would just put three. Does the same exact thing. So if we did show message, uh, this will return shield. Run the game, shield. So that's just a much more convenient way to access that data. It is still good to know this because you're going to inevitably run into code where you're going to need to understand the code, but the accessors are amazing. Let's say we wanted to change shield to something else, like boots. Well, we can do that. Then let's do a show message, DS list find value 3. Okay, so right now, shield is um, number three, right? It's the third, or the fourth position, which is three, zero, one, two, three. So this is gonna show a shield. But if we do this, we're changing it from shield to boots. So if we run the game, it's gonna say boots. If we remove this, it's gonna say shield. So accesses are very cool. It's a way that you can access and add data. We could also say my inventory four, which we don't have a four yet. We have four pieces of data, but it starts at zero. But we could say four equals boots. So now shield's gonna remain, but we're actually adding data. So now we can say four, and you can add data like this as well. We could say five, and that could be something. I created another object called object high score. And basically, we have a DS list called scores, and that's creating it there. Then we're adding just some random scores here. Um, I'm going to add a few more just for good measure. And uh, 75. Okay. But the top score is 300. So it goes 150, 300, 100. Okay. So just imagine multiple people are playing your game. And there's just, let's say there's a whole list of just scores in general. But you want to sort them from highest to lowest. That's where DS list sort comes in handy. Because with this you can actually make it go from lowest to highest or highest to lowest. So if you want to go like, if you want 300 to be on top, you're gonna to set this to false, okay? At least with the method that we're using. So true is ascending, false is descending. We're drawing out text, high scores, and then we're using a for loop, just like we used in the other example, DS list size, the whole the same thing. So first we're gonna run it without DS list sort, and you're going to see it's going to look just like that. So it's 150, 300, 123, 75. Now we're going to run it with sort, and it's going to start us at 300 in ascend down. 300, 150, 175, 23. And of course we run true, and it's going to go from 23 down. So it is very useful for scores. And remember, you can only use these lists within the object you created them in unless you make it global in which case we'd have to change all of this too. The last thing I will say is make sure you destroy a list when you're not using it and when the game is done with it. So otherwise they hang around in your memory, the RAM of the computer, it can cause a memory leak and that would be a big issue with the game that could cause it to crash. So whenever I'm done with any list, I'm gonna use something like DS list delete, or I'm sorry, DS list destroy scores. And actually that would just be good to show you really quick. So destroy will destroy the whole list, but let me show you this too. DS list delete. This will actually delete data within a, within the list. So if we go back to object my object, I'm going to uncomment this. <clears throat> Let's say I want to destroy Apple, for example, which is which is number one. We would just say 
Bear POS equals, which POS means position, DS list, find, index, and we're going to say my inventory, then we're going to say Apple. So we do this to get the position, because we're going to need that, and we're going to say DS list delete, my inventory, and then we're going to say POS, and that'll delete Apple. Because, you know, this is assuming we don't know Apple is at one. Like, it could be anywhere in the list. We just want to delete an Apple. That's that's how we would do it. And then if we run the game now, Apple will not appear in our list, even though we originally added it there. Um, okay, that is, that's it. That's all I got for you today. Thank you for watching. <laughs>